Hi everyone, this is Paul here from the Magdalene Centre. Today I'm going to be talking about House of Cena Retrograde, which starts in Taurus on the 10th of September and finishes in Aries on the 17th of December, with Paris moving back into Aries on the 15th of November. Now for those of you who aren't aware of Palestina, um, she is a goddess asteroid and she orbits between Mars and Jupiter along with three others, namely Ceres, Juno and Vesta. And where they happen to be is um, symbolic because Mars is the last of the personal planets, Jupiter is a social planet. So the three goddess asteroids basically represent process of transforming consciousness from a purely personal level to the collective level where we realise how the way we invest our energy doesn't affect just ourselves, it also affects the wider planet so we become more wise in terms of how we invest our energy. Now the Palestine, um, she's um, quite a complicated asteroid, there's a lot to her and far too much to cover in one video, but Palestine Deals with all, deals with things like creativity, she deals with healing, she deals with um, politics and a sense of justice, and she deals with looking at the big picture and perception, so understanding the big picture. So, in effect, Palestine helps to transform the linear logic of Mercury into the systemic thinking of Jupiter. She creates that bridge between the two that helps us to understand how. The actions we take will um, could potentially ripple outwards. So a key word with Palestina is strategy. So she deals with understanding the big picture and understanding how one particular action will lead to um, one outcome and how it can ripple outwards um, through the law of unintended consequences and achieve something quite different to what we're expecting um, if we were just using linear logic. So, Pals Athena helps us to understand the creative process. She liberates um, creative energy and can help to transform it into thought forms. So, um, she's, she's considered the ruler of three signs. Now, considering her history in terms of representing the separation um, from matriarchal roots and taking um, feminine qualities and using them to the um, benefit of the state. It seems rather apt that she um, rules only masculine signs. These being Leo, which deals with creativity, Libra, um, so balance and diplomacy, and Aquarius, which is the wider perception in this, and the humanitarian bent, so understanding how individual actions affect the mass consciousness. So with Palestina, it's about, with, with her being retrograde, it's time to reflect on what strategies we use in terms of um, how we invest our creative energy. And in Taurus, talking very much about physical things, Taurus being the fixed earth sign, is a, has the strongest um, physical connection to nature. So. With Palace here, one of the things we may be looking at is ecology. Also, learn to sync up with natural cycles. Over time, um, we've drifted away from nature, drifted away from her cycles, and as such, we've ended up with this almost constant conflict of trying to outbattle nature and trying to control her instead of understanding her cycles and figuring out how can we sync up our actions so that they're aligned with the cycles of nature and therefore there's no conflict. Um, what we're doing is in harmony with nature and isn't fighting, isn't fighting an uphill balance or battle against nature. Because nature is very um, powerful, we, she's not a force you can truly control. You may think that we do initially, but there will always be an unintended consequence where nature reasserts dominance. And this is why we need to ideally make that shift away from trying to control nature and move towards understanding how she works and how can we work with her rather than against her so we still get st still achieve our goals um, we still get what we need but we're not having to fight constantly for it we're working with nature rather than against her 
to um, pass him towards them for like the wisdom of um, ecology and understanding how the organic cycles of nature work and how can use them to our advantage without trying to alter them or modify them because we can't we can't do it, it doesn't work like that. It's also pasting is also about in terms of in Taurus, it's also about healing. So this is phys, the healing of the physical body and this may be through hands on healing, um, spending time in nature because at the end of the day one of the problems that a lot of us have is the modern lifestyle has um, caused us to move further and further away from nature and part of us needs that connection with nature that because we are at the end of the day we are um, part of you know, the physical body it comes from the earth so the more connected we feel to the earth and nature the more relaxed um, the mind is because nature has a very therapeutic effect on the mind. There's been plenty of studies on it. Um, you only have to do a quick search on Google to find out how many studies have been done on the effects of nature on health and even people with severe depression can benefit just by walking through a green space. It doesn't have to be wild nature, even a park will do. So in terms of healing, spending time in nature can um, be very calming and rejuvenating for the mind and the body. And in terms of our artistic business, we may um, desire things like landscaping or um, spending time in nature to get inspiration for our creative talents. And in terms of, in terms of wisdom, because Palestina is a wisdom um, goddess and deals with wisdom, we're talking about the wisdom of common sense. This is, by common sense, just talking about things that it doesn't require any kind of arbitrary logic, it just makes perfect sense the way things are. So the more we the more we spend time with nature and understanding her cycles, the more grounded we can become, the more that practical attitude that inherent to Taurus can shine through. Because by spending time with nature we can calm ourselves down, we can become properly grounded because that's one of the beauties of nature. When you, you know, spend time with her you feel a lot more grounded, you feel a lot more calm and centred and then um, this makes it a lot easier for us to think about things calmly, practically and logically and identify the right strategy. This tourist also deals with personal resources so the more we the more relaxed um, we are and the more we um, deal with things with a calm mind, the more likely we are to um, base our strategy on um, common sense, on sound principles that will yield results but are not going to be violating nature. Now on the 15th of November, Palestine moves backwards into Aries, marking a shift in focus of her wisdom from common sense to the wisdom of inspiration, so that in that, that initial creative spark that is the beginning of everything. Because we all, we all start off with the conception of ourselves as that spark of consciousness. This is Aries for it's the beginning of the whole zodiac cycle, the beginning of the evolution of consciousness, from a spark of awareness um, all the way through to realising our connection with everything around us. In Aries, it's talk, we're talking about we may be um, doing something and we soon get a spark of inspiration for a brand new project, some, a pioneering new approach to something. And Aries deals with action, so it's the wisdom to take action on inspired ideas and having the courage to pioneer new approaches to things. Um, Powers Athena also deals with the um, clash between fear of success and the courage to you know, pursue an idea and um, that people haven't done before, we don't know if it's going to work, but we still have the courage to do it. And she also has um, that strategizing attitude of figuring out, okay, how can we take this idea and how can we make it work? It's also, the more we understand the creative process, the more we understand how we invest our creative energy, the more wisely we can invest it. Because we, we're all inherently creative beings, that's a part of who we are, but many of us, for whatever reason, get cut off from it. 
and power system can help liberate that creative energy into um, various ideas but ideally these ideas also need to look at the wider collective not just ourselves so by understanding the impact of ideas and attitudes um, on others we can more wisely use our creative energies in our projects and figure out how can we use our inspiration to create something that will not just benefit ourselves but will also benefit other people. Palestine also deals with things like um, diplomacy so it's learn to communicate tactfully so that we don't end up sparring clashing with other people over ideas. We um, learn to compromise and work together on collective ideas so if there is a collective um, goal that we're striving for so we're in a group of people and we all want to achieve the same thing it's necessary to do things with um, diplomacy rather than my way or the highway and Palestine can show us the bigger picture and um, how to use diplomacy and tact to achieve these goals without um, having to t turn to um, conflicts. So, um, that being said, Pallas Athena was also a warrior goddess, so she's all, that warrior energy, which is very strong in Aries, is um, something that we do need to tap into for any new endeavours, because anything new, we, we all have that innate resistance against it. It's something that we can learn to override in time though, and by learning to change the fear of success into courage to face the unknown, and to have the courage to express our creative ideas without knowing how other people will receive it and how well our creative endeavours will go. The courage of Aries um, being transformed through palace can allow us to have that courage to pursue that creative endeavour without knowing exactly where things are going to go in the long run. So there's a lot, a lot to bear in mind here but the more we can understand our creative processes the more we um, can look at things from a systemic perspective so we look at how does one action impact the whole as opposed to um, just following linear logic which only looks at the next step along the more we understand how our actions ripple outwards and affect people in ways that we cannot control the more wisely we can channel our creativity through actions that Again, guided by um, diplomacy and understanding the impact on other people. So, this is a time where we need to take, spend time with ourselves and understand our own personal creative process, understand what goals we want to achieve, and develop the right strategies for achieving these goals um, in a way that is not going to or will minimise um, some of the negative impacts it can have because if you, then one example to take is you look at all the protesting we see around the world now in most cases the people starting the protest do it through peaceful means they're not interested in violence they just want to make a political point because there's an injustice taking place and they want to achieve justice which under the team of Palestina however the people who um, start the process cannot control um, other people who have their own agendas and who come along and use it as an excuse to um, commit violent acts, to commit arson. So the more we understand that whatever actions we take will ripple outwards and can have unforeseen consequences, the more we can develop a strategy to try and minimise this. So by incorporating wisdom into every act we do and understanding that everything is connected so any action we take will have other consequences so it's important that we use wisdom as our guide to what actions we should take to achieve goals and to, and to allow that wisdom to guide our creative process into forms which will benefit not just ourselves but will also benefit others this is a process we can engage in any day. This isn't something that's just you need to pass a scene of retrograde. But this is a time where it's particularly important to evaluate the actions we take, evaluate our creative um, desires and impulses, 
and use wisdom as a guide to how we invest our creative energy through our actions to achieve goals so that the actions we take are guided by wisdom rather than egoic desire and by doing this we can take more conscious control of how we achieve things and avoid some of the unwanted consequences of actions because they're guided by wisdom rather than flawed logic. So there's a lot to take on board and there's so much more that could be discussed but um, there's, not, there's nowhere it could all be incorporated into um, one video so this is just be really a rough guide to Pasadena or Raptor Grey but I hope it's useful for you and I hope the next few months a chance for you to connect with your own wisdom and figure out more and if need be figure out more constructive ways to channel our actions or channel our creativity through actions guided by wisdom and love rather than fear and egotism. Yeah. Take care and may this great bring you much wisdom and many blessings.